This video will demonstrate how to orient when you are studying the brain, guide you through the major parts of the human brain and demonstrate the location of the 12 cranial nerves. The first thing to do when looking at the preserved brain or model of the human brain is to orient the brain. As you can see in this model of the human brain, this is inferior surface with anterior and posterior part. If we flip the brain, now we are looking at the superior surface of the brain. Let's now see the same orientation in preserved adult human brain. Now you are looking at the inferior surface of the brain. So this is the anterior, this is posterior part of the brain, and again this is in inferior part of the brain. If we flip brain, now we are looking at the superior surface of the brain. Because during this video you will see human brain cut in different ways, let's first review terminology used to explain the planes of sectioning. If you cut brain in two equal right and left halves, that is mid-sagittal plane as shown in this view. An unequal cut will result in sagittal or lateral sections. If the brain is cut and divided into anterior and posterior parts, that is a frontal or coronal plane. Lastly, a plane that divides the brain into upper or superior and lower or inferior regions is a horizontal or transverse plane. This view shows the mid-sagittal section of the real brain and the model. Let's review structure that we can observe. This is the cortex, which is the gray matter of the brain. This is the corpus callosum, consisting of the axons which connect two parts of the brain. Then we have here lateral ventricle, space in the brain. And next structure we can observe here is diencephalon. And in the model we can see that in a blue. Posterior of the diencephalon is the brain stem, consisting of the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. In this real brain, you can also see spinal cord. On the dorsal aspect of the brainstem is cerebellum. In this view of the cerebellum, we can see gray matter and white matter which is in the shape of the tree and is called arbor vitae, which means tree of life. Let's now review ventricular system in the brain. The biggest space you can see in this view is lateral ventricle. Ventricle, which is in the level of the midbrain, is third ventricle. Ventricle, which is at the level of the cerebellum and brainstem, is fourth ventricle. And finally, cerebral aqueduct is aqueduct which connects third to the fourth ventricle. When looking at the brain from the lateral view, we can easily identify four lobes. Frontal in orange, parietal in blue, temporal in yellow, and occipital in green. Deep underneath temporal lobe sits fifth lobe or insula. In this model, I will point to two major salsa in the cerebral hemispheres. Central sulcus, which divides frontal from parietal lobe, and lateral sulcus, which divides frontal from temporal. 
These are the cranial nerves on the inferior side of the brain. Cranial nerves from 1 to 12 are olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear. Trochlear is the only cranial nerve which exits on the dorsal side of the brain. Then we have trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and finally, hypoglossal. To remember these names of cranial nerves, we can use mnemonic. On old Olympus towering top, a friendly Viking grew vines and hops. In this video, we will demonstrate the dissection of the sheep brain and we will compare brain structures between the sheep brain and the human brain. We will first orient the sheep brain and review the major external structures. In this tray, we have four sheep brains. This is the dorsal or superior view of the brain with anterior and posterior side. Next brain is positioned ventrally or inferiorly. And then we have lateral view of the brain and mid sagittal view of the brain. The brain is covered with three membranes. I'm now pointing to the thickest membrane, which is dura mater. Usually this membrane is removed with dissection of the brain when you extract brain from the skull. Underneath dura mater is pia mater, and between pia mater and dura mater is arachnoidea. When you remove dura mater, it looks like this. In this view, I will point to several structures. Olfactory bulb, optic nerve, optic chiasm, diencephalon, mammillary body, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. If we cut the brain into two identical left and right halves, we will have mid sagittal view as seen in this screen. I will point to several structures in this screen. First, I will point to the cerebral cortex. This structure beneath the cerebral cortex is called corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is a structure which connects two halves of the brain. This space here is lateral ventricle. Above the lateral ventricle or roof of the lateral ventricles is made by corpus callosum. Floor of the lateral ventricles is made, is made by fornix. Posterior to these structures, we can observe thalamus, pineal gland, optic nerve, pituitary. Posterior to these structures are some structures of the midbrain, such as superior colliculi and inferior colliculi, which are not very visible here. Next structure is the pons, medulla oblongata, and this is spinal cord. Let's review ventricular system in the sheep brain. This is the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct, and finally, fourth ventricle. The first difference between human and sheep brain is the size of the olfactory bulbs. In the sheep brains, olfactory bulbs are much larger than in the human brain in comparison to the size of the brain. The second difference between human and sheep brains are the mammillary bodies. There are two mammillary bodies in the human brain, and there is one in sheep brain. 
but in the sheep brain, mammillary bradi is much larger in the respect to the size of the brain than in the human brain. The final obvious difference between sheep and human brain is the size. Human brain weight is around three to four pounds, while sheep brain is around 140 grams. Human brain has significantly larger number of salsi, which are grooves, and gyri, which are folds. Salsi are also deeper. This pattern of the salsi and gyri increases surface area of the human brain and its complexity. This concludes the demonstration of the dissection of the sheep brain. Please be sure to dissect the real sheep brain in the lab, and if you have questions, ask your lab instructor for guidance. Thank you.